At 3.47 a.m. on May 24, 1943, Commander Howard Gilmore was on the deck of the submarine USS Growler, patrolling the dark waters of the South Pacific near the Solomon Islands. Suddenly, the lookout shouted, Enemy ship! Bow to starboard! It was a Japanese destroyer emerging from the fog just 300 yards away. There was no time to dive. The Growler attempted a desperate maneuver, but the collision was inevitable. The Japanese ship struck the submarine with brutal force, tearing the deck and mortally wounding Gilmore. With his final breath of command, he shouted, Take her down! Take her down! The submarine dove, saving the crew but losing its commander. Gilmore was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. But his death revealed a deadly problem that was decimating the American submarine fleet. Allied submarines were dying in shallow waters and surface combat because they couldn't detect enemy ships in the dark. Conventional radar was useless against small, fast targets. The American Navy needed a technological miracle. And what they received looked like a joke, a flexible plastic tube that sailors nicknamed the pool noodle. But this ridiculous toy was about to change submarine warfare forever and send 15 Japanese submarines to the bottom of the ocean in a single coordinated operation. By 1942, the American submarine campaign in the Pacific was in crisis. Submarines were the United States' primary offensive weapon against Japan, responsible for cutting off enemy supply routes. But there was a devastating problem, the Mark 14 torpedoes were defective, and the submarines were extremely vulnerable in surface combat. During the first 18 months of the war, American submarines fired thousands of torpedoes that simply didn't explode or exploded prematurely. The failure rate was 60%. There was another, even deadlier problem. At night, on the surface, the submarines were practically blind. The periscope was useless in the dark, and human lookouts could only see a few yards. Between January 1942 and June 1943, 22 American submarines were lost, many in surface combats that could have been avoided if the commanders had known the enemy was approaching. The solution seemed obvious, install radar on the submarines. The problem was that the radar systems of the time were enormous, heavy, and fragile. At MIT's Radiation Laboratory, a group of physicists and engineers was developing something revolutionary, a compact microwave radar operating on the 10-centimeter SJ band. The device was small enough to fit in a submarine and powerful enough to detect ships 20 miles away. The challenge was the antenna. Conventional radars used rigid metal antennas that needed to rotate mechanically. On a submarine, space was a non-existent luxury. The antenna needed to be small, flexible, and retractable. The solution came from an engineer named Dr. Luis Alvarez, who would later win the Nobel Prize in Physics. His idea was so strange that Navy officials initially rejected it as impractical, an antenna made of flexible plastic that could be retracted like a periscope. The result was the SJ-1 radar, with an antenna that looked exactly like a pool noodle, a long, flexible orange tube that rose from the deck when needed and retracted when the submarine dove. When the first prototypes arrived, sailors laughed, calling it the professor's toy or the rubber antenna. But in August 1943, everything changed. The submarine USS Harder, commanded by the legendary Sam Dealey, was one of the first to receive the SJ-1 radar. On the night of August 22, the radar detected a contact at 12 miles. Dealey couldn't see anything, but he decided to trust the equipment. For 40 minutes, the harder sailed guided only by the radar. At 2,000 yards, the lookouts finally spotted the silhouette of a Japanese destroyer. Dealey fired four torpedoes and the target exploded in flames. The crew was stunned, they had destroyed an enemy before they could even see them. Dealey reported that the radar turned the night from their greatest enemy into their greatest advantage. In October 1943, American intelligence intercepted messages describing a massive operation, a convoy of 20 merchant ships escorted by 15 defense submarines. Admiral Charles Lockwood organized an unprecedented operation, a wolf pack of nine American submarines equipped with SJ radar. On the night of October 23, the operation began. The American submarines created an invisible net that no Japanese ship could cross without being detected. 
At 2.15 a.m., the USS Tang detected a Japanese submarine at 15 miles and sank it before the enemy even knew they were under attack. At 3.40 a.m., the USS Wahoo detected and sank two Japanese submarines in less than five minutes. Over the next six hours, the Americans methodically hunted the defenders. The USS Harder sank three submarines, the USS Snook, two, the USS Tang, another two. One by one, the Japanese submarines were eliminated without ever realizing they were being tracked. By 9 a.m., 15 Japanese submarines had been destroyed, and the merchant convoy, now defenseless, was completely annihilated. It was the greatest submarine defeat in Japanese naval history. In the following months, the Imperial Japanese Navy was perplexed. Reports described the inexplicable ability of American submarines to detect positions in total darkness. They considered spies or even supernatural perception, but the idea of a compact radar on a submarine was considered technically impossible by Japanese engineers. While they doubted, American factories were producing 500 SJ units a month. Between August 1943 and the end of the war, the SJ radar completely transformed the campaign. Submarines with the system had a 400% higher success rate. During Operation Starvation in 1945, the system was used to systematically mine shipping routes and isolate Japan, collapsing its economy. The USS Tang sank 33 ships, while the USS Wahoo destroyed 60,000 tons. General Douglas MacArthur declared that the submarine campaign was more decisive for Japan's defeat than the atomic bombs. By the end of the war, American submarines had sunk over half of the Japanese merchant fleet, with 78% of these sinkings occurring after the introduction of the SJ radar. Dr. Luis Alvarez, creator of the flexible antenna, won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1968, having kept his war work secret for decades. Commander Sam Dilley and the USS Harder were lost in action in 1944, after sinking 17 enemy ships. The USS Wahoo was also lost, only being found in 2006. The SJ radar remained in use until the 1960s and established the design principles for all modern naval radars. The 15 Japanese submarines lost in October 1943 represented 20% of the country's active fleet. And it all started with an antenna that looked like a child's toy. The Japanese paid for their arrogance with the loss of hundreds of ships and, ultimately, the war itself. In 2024, the USS Harder was found at a depth of 900 meters in the Philippines, with its SJ radar still visible on the deck, a silent testimony to the technology that changed the course of history.